Welcome to implementing DMARC using Office 365. What we're going to do in this video is show you actually how to set up uh, not only DMARC but SPF and DKIM within Office 365. So obviously we're going to use the admin portal for Office 365 but we're also going to use mm. our GoDaddy DNS service provider in order to actually put in the DNS records that are needed for each one of those uh, standards. So we switch over here to Chrome and here you can see the products pages for our domain got dmark.org on GoDaddy. And then in this other tab, we are logged in already to Office 365. So the first thing is, is just to show you where DNS is set up in GoDaddy. So when you're in GoDaddy, you go to domains got dmark.org. Over here, you got a button called the DNS. We're just going to click on that button. And what this will do is take us to the DNS section. So this is where we're going to add all the records that we need to for in order for DMARC to work successfully. So the first one we're going to talk about is SPF. So the nice thing about Office 365 is that when you're first setting this up and you're setting up your domain, you have the option to allow Office 365 to create mm -hmm. DNS records for you. And one of the DNS records that actually will create for you is an SPF record. So if we're looking here under our records in GoDaddy, we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to see here we find a section that says TXT. So under TXT we have our SPF record. So I'm just going to click on the pencil so that we can see what the full record looks like. So it's V equals SPF. It has the include statement which is for SPF.protection.outlook.com with a minus all or a dash all which is for a hard fail. So this is what Microsoft itself will create for you. Now, when you're in GoDaddy or in whatever third party provider that you're using for DNS, if this record does not exist, what you can do is either put in the record yourself and the record will actually look like this. It will actually be this, unless of course you have third party tools. Or what you can do is you can go into Office 365 and actually have it create those records in case you missed that step. So all you would have to do in that situation is just click on the admin button. This will go to the administrative section for Office 365. And what you will do in here on the left hand side, there's a section for settings. And under settings, you go to domain. And in here, it's going to show you your domains. And in this case, it says both are set up. But I'm going to click on gotdmark.org. And what it will do here is it'll go through and you can see what the DNS records that it created for you in, at, on a previous step. So you also can go to setup and domains and you can get to the same portion. So now what you'll see here, I'll make the screen a little bit bigger. So here I'll show you, create the MX record, it created the TXT record for SPF. Now if none of this is present, what you can do is you can always click on DS, DNS management and this will actually start up the DNS configuration and update your DNS settings for you. So it is recommended that during the setup process to add the DNS records for you. If not, go ahead and just go through this step and it will go ahead and create those records for you and implement them as well. So now at this point, SPF is already set up. Now, take into account that there may be other additional, there may be additional third-party providers that are you're using for um, sending mail. So if you're using things like Salesforce or MailChimp and other types of con uh, customer relationship management databases or other third-party vendors, you do need to add them into here um, as you go along. If you're not sure of them, you could always add them later if you choose to. But for now, in this case for dmark.org, we're only using outlook.com. We're not using any third party providers, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Now, the next step is going back to Office 365 is to set up the DNS records for Deacon. Now, this is a little bit different and it is quite unique in the way Office does, Office 365 does it. And it actually is a very good way. It's a very sec more secure way in which Microsoft Office 365 will actually handle the DKIM keys for you. So this way you don't have to worry about the private keys and the public keys, storing them in the, the right location and so on. You just have to add the correct DNS record, which they will provide to you. So where do we find out and where do we set up DKIM? The way you will do this here is we're back in the admin center for Office 365. You're going to go down here in the admin center section. Now, of course, this is only going to work as long as you have uh, business premium or higher because you have to make sure you have to be using the mail portion of Office 365. 
in order for in order to set this up. So because under admin center, you'll see a section for exchange because that's the online email server that is applied to you. So you click on exchange. This will open up another window. And in this window, there's going to be a section called protection. <clears throat> so you see here on the left hand side, you also see in the middle on the dashboard under protection toward right at the bottom, you're going to see DKIM and that's your domain key identifiable mail. Click on DKIM. It gives you a little bit of information on it. So now by default, the way it will work is that gotdmark.onmicrosoft.com got is the default domain and that will always be the domain that's being used. And, for, and this is enabled by default for you. So you can disable it, but it's best just to leave it enabled in case there are some issues you may run into because it will sign using this key by default. Um, but the problem with this is if you leave this alone, Anything that's being sent by gotdmark.org is going to be signed by using the gotdmark.onmicrosoft.com domain. There's a problem there because they're not aligned. The DKIM key needs to match. So when DMARC were to look at this, it's going to say, well, this is not aligned. So there's a problem that's going on with this. So what you need to do is click on the, your actually primary domain. So in this case, gotdmark.org, and you need to enable DKIM signatures here. So problem is, is though, in order for this to work, you do actually have to set up the DNS records first, and then you can enable it. But the reason I'm showing you by this way here is because if you're not sure what to add, what you can do is you can click on enable. It's going to go out and look to see if the record exists. If not, it will tell you what the record should look like. So if you look here, it's going to say CNAME record does not exist for this config. Please publish the following two CNAME records first. Selector one dash got dmark dash org underscore domain key dot got dmark dot on Microsoft dot com. And it actually is giving you a second one as well. So you do need to set up both of these in order for this to work. So this way, now you know what the value is going to be when you set up this record. So now the other unique part is this is that since they handle the private key and public keys for you, they're providing you with a C name instead of a TXT record. So this way, the C name is going to be a pointer to a domain where the where the public key actually resides in this case. And so this way, you don't even know what the public key looks like. You don't know what the private key looks like. You just have this record to for people to point to. So we're going to go over here into domain manager and we're going to create the two keys. So we'll click on add. The type is going to be C name. Now for the host. Now this is important as well because the host is going to be something specific and it has to match what they what is being actually used within uh, within Microsoft Exchange. So in this case, it's always going to be selector one dot underscore domain key. And the reason for this is, is this is now what you're calling the host. And this is a way that when people are looking for it, they know what to look for um, for in terms of DKIM. And then this is going to point to, and that's going to be the value that they provide here. So you can't copy and paste, so you may have to go back and forth just to check to see what that you're typing it in correctly. So in this case, it's going to be select, right? Selector one dash got dmark dash org dash org. So it uses hyphens and not not periods and then the remainder there. So dot underscore domain key dot got dmark dot dmark dot on micro soft dot com. So this is going to be the key and we'll leave the TTL to one hour. So at this point we just click on save and now we have our first DKIM key. So just to confirm, we go back here, make sure that it's pointing to the right location. So selector dash got dmark dash org underscore domain keys, domain key dot got dmark dot on Microsoft dot com. Go back here, double check selector one dash got dmark dash org dot underscore domain key dot got dmark dot on Microsoft dot com. So the nice thing also about Microsoft is that it gives you two keys to work with. So that way, you know, in case something were to happen with the first one, you do have the second one that you can use. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel this and then we're going to create the second one. So again, you just click on add, select the type as C name. 
This one is now going to be called selector2 dot underscore domain key. And this is going to point to selector2 dash got dmark dash org dot underscore <coughs> domain key dot got dmark dot on Microsoft dot com. And we'll also leave this for one hour. <clears throat> so now at this point we have our two DKIM keys in place. And now what we can do is we can go back to our DKIM tab and enable DKIM. Now, before I click the enable, just take into account that this may take some time to actually enable. Some cases it is instantaneous. In some cases it may take a few hours before you can click on the enable button uh, in order to do it. So just keep tabs on this if it doesn't do it immediately and don't worry about it. Just make sure that the record is set up correctly and everything is fine. And then maybe give it, a, you know, like maybe an hour or so uh, in order to enable it. <clears throat> so as you can see in this case here, it didn't go in. So we'll just hold off on it and I'll check back in it in a bit. <clears throat> so now then the, the final stage is to implement DMARC. So now with DMARC, you don't need to do anything on Office 365 in order to enable DMARC or set up DMARC. By default, it does do a check for you. So any incoming message from other organizations, it will check those messages to determine if there's a DMARC setting or capability on, settings on those messages. If so, it will go back and check the sending organizations DNS to determine what to do with the message if it passes or fails any of the authentic authentication checks. So in this case, now we need to set up DMARC for our organization, in this case, gotdmark.org. So we're gonna go back to Domain Manager and we're gonna add another DNS record. <clears throat> and this DNS record is going to be a TXT record. So DMARC is always going to be a, D a TXT record. There's no option about that. It's always gonna be that regardless of who, whom you're using. Now the host <clears throat> will always be underscore DMARC. It always has to be underscore DMARC. There is no option. You can't leave out the underscore and it has to be all lowercase d mark and the reason for this is because this is what you're calling the actual name of the record so in, in actuality i end up being underscore d mark dot um underscore d mark dot got d mark dot org and it will automatically add a portion of it to this now the text values this is where we're going to go ahead and then add this in so the value here always start with the version. So version equals dmark1. That will always be the version. There is no reports of any additional versions coming out at any point in time or anytime soon. So that is our version number, dmark equals one. The next I'm gonna put in p equals. So what p equals means is this is the policy that you're applying to your dmark and any messages that, and how to handle those messages if it were to pass or fail. So in this case, the recommendation is always to start off with none. So I'm going to start off with none in this case, just to see what's going on with these messages. Is it actually being used? Is it not being used? You know, what are the defaults to it? And then in case if I need to make any adjustments to say the SPF record or the DKIM keys, then I can do so when it's time to do this. So always start off with P equals none, just to make sure that everything is set up correctly. The next value that I'm going to add is the mail. So RUA equals, so RUA is going to tell, say that I want to receive aggregate reports for this domain. So this way, those aggregate reports are the, what's going to tell you what exactly is going on within those, um, with, with each of those messages that are being sent from this domain or being, or if any other servers are using this domain. So I'm going to send this to smirza at dmark, oops, sorry, got dmark.org. It's actually RUA equals mail to smirza at. You know, the mail to is important. That needs to be there. If you have multiple addresses, you just add a comma and mail to colon and add the next email address. So in this case, there's only going to be one. So I'm going to end there and add the semicolon. I'm also going to look for forensic reports because the forensic reports can give me a little bit more detail for any failed messages to determine, okay, why could the message have failed or what particular messages have, have failed. Now, with, when it comes to forensic reports, which is RUF, you may not get forensic reports from every single recipient system. And that's mainly due to privacy concerns. So it's, you will definitely get the aggregate reports 
from majority of those recipient servers, but the RUF, the forensic servers, forensic reports, you may not get too many of those. You may get very few. Depends on uh, the location and the servers. So then again, I'm gonna send it to the same location and you have to do mail to colon and I'm gonna send it to this address. Now, if you're looking to send it to a different address, there is you can do so, but there has to be additional configuration and additional records must be created in order to receive to be able to send those reports to those lo locations. So the receiving side, where the recipient side of those reports are, they need to make additional steps in order to do so, in order to get this. So really, this is all you have to have in order to set up DMARC. I'm going to take it a little bit further because I'm going to say that, well, while we're while we're working on our top level domain and making sure that everything is accurate, I know for gotdmark.org, there is absolutely no uh, subdomains whatsoever. So I don't want somebody coming in and while I'm fixing the top level domain, gotdmark.org, to go ahead and try to spoof a sub level domain. So a sub level domain could be something like sales.gotdmark.org or hr.gotdmark.org. So what I'm gonna do is add this tag here, which is SP equals. So that's subdomain policy. And in this case, I'm gonna put reject because I know there is none. Now, if you're not sure, you can leave out the SP tag and the, the top level tag, the P equals, will actually also handle your subdomains as well. But in this case, since I know there aren't any, I'm going to add the SP equals reject. And then additionally, I'm also going to add in the tag RI, which is the amount, which is the time that the report should be sent. By default, if you leave this out, it is going to be uh, every 24 hours, which is 84,600 seconds. So I'm just going to put that in there just, you know, just to dictate it. There are additional options, but they're not really required. So in this case, I'm going to leave this as it is, and I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And now I have my DMARC policy in place. So as you can see here, and within a few minutes, we had we have our SPF record, we have our two DKIM keys that we need, and we have our DMARC record in place. Now I'm just gonna go back here to DKIM, click on enable, and hopefully it'll work. And there you go. Now DKIM is now enabled at this point. So as you can see, you may need to give it a couple of minutes, and sometimes you may have to give it the full hour in order to allow for DNS to propagate. So now we have everything set up in this is for everything and now DMARC is set up to none and then the more I use more mails and messages that I sent out I should get a report within 24 hours um, of implementation of the DMARC record so it may take a little bit longer than 24 hours but you should get at least 24 hours within 24 hours uh, start getting reports now, just take into account a few things. There's going to be additional resources that we'll make available to you because there might be situations where the DKIM options may not be available to you to either enable or disable it. If you go to our site, dmark.globalcyberalliance.org, under the resources section, we'll provide a page there that will give you some tips and tricks in order to get DKIM enabled if, in case it doesn't show up here or even to force it to be enabled because you do need to have uh, a window system with PowerShell in order to get that enabled and in order to make it present. And then you can also use the DMARC.Global Cyber Alliance uh, site to also go through the process and determining how you would want to have DMARC. In this case, you know, I knew about DMARC, so I was able to set up, but you can use a setup guide to actually help you with the, the creation of the key. If you do have any questions, you feel free to contact us at any point in time and we can hopefully answer any of the questions that you may have. Thank you for attending this video.